Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys at Magic. This is Hunter, David, and Shane. Say what up, guys. What's going on, everybody? What's up, nerds? We are back. This time doing a video we kind of didn't expect to do. That is right. We are talking about spoilers. And what Again? kind of spoilers, you might ask? Is it the upcoming Bloomboro set? Yeah. Yeah. Is it the set after that called Duskborn? Yeah. Is it the set after that that they just announced called Foundation? Yeah. We got magic. <laughs> Hunter, I don't know why you're upset. It's been like 48 hours since we've stopped talking about... Uh, wait, no, we haven't. We haven't even stopped talking about Assassin's Creed. We're still on point. Modern Horizons 3. We're putting out content. Oh, um, God. But here we are talking about three new sets. Let's, let's go ahead and get started. We will do it the backwards way because they talked about the last sets first in the, the stream today. We're going to talk about the earliest sets. So... We're talking about Bloomboro. It comes out August 2nd. This first card is Salvation Swan. Three and a white for a 3-3 three, three creature bird cleric. It's got flash. It's got flying. And it says when it or another bird you control enters, exile up to one target creature you control without flying. Return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. Cute art. Love it. Cute I don't art. Know. I don't know what to do with this card. Like, I, okay, number one, yes, looking over the overall art direction for this, this is really cool. I, I like, like, the storybook kind of feel that this gives off, and I hope that there's plenty of, like, really awesome cards um, to play around with for this. Oh, no, without a doubt, we're going to be talking about quite a bit. This is the only rare they showed from Bloomboro. Obviously, they're pro probably keeping the rest of the rares for actual spoiler season. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about uncommons and commons from Bloomboro. They showed off today as well, but all cute art for sure. Yeah. Uh, this card is cool. Uh, being able to blink something and give it a flying counter seems pretty good. Cool. Yeah, but you... Never mind. I guess like in a vacuum, this card is fine. But it's, to me, it's like, oh, it, like it says another bird. So it's like, I want to play this with other birds. But you know what birds have in common? They fly. They, they fly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. I don't know. Um, I'm sure it'll find a home. On, on a little twist here, though, this does mean that ability counters are going to be coming back with Bloomboro. Yeah, and this True. is... Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the first time I know they announced that they were going to drop Enters the Battlefield as a term and just say enters is this kind of the first time we've seen it just so. say enters i don't i don't actually think so i know that they are like now dropping the name from magic cards yeah so no longer etb is just e. e well it's it, so for example like and and i don't this card doesn't do it but whenever it says like whenever salvation swan they're gonna drop that and just say like whenever it or like whenever this spell or something like that to refer to the card back to itself. So it's just another way that they're going to shorthand and start using less words. Less words. Start using good. less words to increase the amount of words that can be put on a card. <laughs> there you go. Make it more complicated. Exactly that. All right, let's move on. We're going to be talking about this new cycle of lands. That's right. We have an uncommon land cycle coming to Bloomboro. It's specific to all of the certain creature types each color kind of is. So this first one is Oak Hollow Village. It's a land. You can tap it to add a colorless, or you can tap it to add a green. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. You can also pay a green, tap it, put a plus one, plus one counter on each frog, rabbit, raccoon, or squirrel you control that end of the battlefield this turn. Cute. There you go. Dude, this is awesome. I mean, it gives us a little bit of a heads up as to the creatures, uh, like types that we're going to be seeing, as well as the exactly. colors that we're going to see from Bloomboro. Also, this goes in Thalia and the Gitrog monster for your commander deck. <laughs> it's a That's frog. True. That's this cute. Is, uh, these lands are solid, especially if you're doing like creature themed decks. Yeah. I think they just slide into all of them. Even Coming yeah. in untapped is nice, yeah. Exactly. We'll just go ahead and jump straight into the red one. It is Rock Face Village. Same situation. Land. You can tap for colors, tap for red, and spend this mana only to cast a creature. You can pay a red, tap it, target lizard, mouse, otter, or raccoon. You control gets plus one, plus zero, and gains haste until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Cute. Yeah. Look at the little art, too. I love the oh. little villages. I thought they were frog mouths, but I'm pretty sure they're lizard, lizard mouths. It's a so, thing. all right. So this actually full on, like, if you start to look at this, this tells us exactly what color pairing. So, for example, like, raccoon was referenced on the green one and yep. on the red one. So that yep. means raccoons are going to be both green and red. Uh, okay. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Catching on. I like that. 
We're learning as we're going. <laughs> Moving on to the black village. It is a mudflat village. Same situation. Taps for colors. Taps for black for creatures. It also has another ability you can pay one and a black. Tap it. Sacrifice mudflat village. Return target bat, lizard, rat, or squirrel card from your graveyard to your hand. A lot of recursion. Cool. This there one does go. require you sacrifice it, though. Yeah, it's so kind of a this, bummer. This is a one and done effect. A one yeah. and done effect. As you, you can see here, we have lizard and squirrel referenced again. And a new one, a bat. Bat. Moving on to Lilypad Village. Land. It's the blue one. Uh, cut, tap for colors, tap for blue for creatures. Pay a blue, tap, surveil two. Activate only if a bird, frog, otter, or rat enter the battlefield under your control this turn. Okay. I love how they're all like little little villages on just like little microbiomes. Like, this is a hut, and it's next to a, a plant that is yeah. like... Exactly. You could walk across this plain and just crush its inhabitants without paying attention. Also, this one has the Sydney Opera House there on the right-hand side. So oh, that's pretty cool, dude. Lily like Village. Lily uh, they like music. Village. This reminds me of something we'd build in, like, Grounded. <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. bit. Good reference. And moving on to the final one is the white one. It's Lupin Flower Village. Land, taps for colors, taps for white for creatures, and has ability where you can pay one and a white tap at sacrifice Lupin Flower Village. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a bat, bird, mouse, or rabbit card from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Once again, a one-time effect. Yeah, but still seems decent. I mean, these are all uncommon, so. Yeah. Card draw-esque on a white card, so on a white land, so pretty solid. What is the... This looks kind of spooky, this place. What are you talking about? I think it looks, like, pretty dope. Don't you see all these big flowers on her? Come on. Yeah. I see it in the background, sure. Can't but be look spooky. At the, I'm, looking, I'm looking like... It's like old Rutstein type. The orange glow, you know? That's because they have um, electricity. Obviously. <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, yeah. Hunter. Lupin flowers. That's right. All right. Those are the new land cycles. Let's move on to some of the cards they showed from Bloomborough. Like I said, these are all common. First up, Sun Shower Druid. One green mana for a 0-2 creature frog druid. It says when it enters, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and you gain one life. Not bad for a little one mana. I mean, it is common, so makes it's sense. got the power. Look yeah. at him. A little one-time effect again. I did the, or I, I love this card so much. He's like praying to the to the rain god or something. <laughs> Look at him. He's uh, he's so cute. <laughs> you had your hands up. Leaked. You couldn't see it, but yeah. Yeah. All right. To the rain gods. We 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 need to talk about the most important thing about this card. Okay. Which is the camouflage. The squirrel. Dude, that, yeah, dude, the little <laughs> squirrel on the bottom right side. <laughs> he's like ah. <laughs> Maybe it's just because like animal emotions are difficult to be able to track, but that thing looks terrified. Like this guy is falling. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, he's great. I like this little card. Moving on. Might of the Meek. One red for an instant. Target creature gains trample until end of turn. It also gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. If you control a mouse, also draw a card. Uh cool. Draw a card. I don't Places like itself. This. Hey, it cantrips. In red. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's why I don't like this. I mean, there's somebody in our play group that he's got like a Zada deck. It's a miserable time to play up against. He also is a big fan of Boros, and Boros are apparently mice now. So like, and this, this is going to get played against me a lot and be annoying. I mean, even without mice, just giving it trample and drawing a card seems pretty good. Look at how cute that mouse is attacking a snake, though. And it's going to lose. Interesting art style here, though, because it looks like the mouse is almost like not finished. Maybe that's just me. No, it's moving quickly. If you see behind it, there's like a yeah, like a white shadow of it. If you look how so. fast I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyways, the, uh, I said this before. Are combat tricks getting better? Yeah. Yes. I okay. mean, magic cards are getting better. Yeah. Yeah. Ma magic One cards are getting to do better. All that stuff seems power creep. Good. For real. We we talked at the very beginning of this video about how like they're getting less or that they're putting fewer words and phrases on magic cards so that they can fit more words and phrases on, on magic they're just, cards. They're, or they're just putting more powerful <laughs> words and phrases. Did, did you did you not watch any of the pro tour today? I swear there were some cards that just like they're they're making big waves in modern, but they just do and do and do and do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's move on. Early winter 
four and a black for an instant. Choose one, exile target creature, or target opponent exiles an enchantment they control. Probably well, the common. cutest art that we've seen so far. Because yeah, look at his torch, bug. it's a firefly. It's a bug. Like, I'm, I'm imagining, like, this super strong wind. It's just someone, like, blowing their mouth, like... <laughs> he's like, oh, it's so hot, oh, God. Um, yeah. this is a mono-black exile enchantment card. It is five mana, and that's incredibly expensive, but, like, that's an interesting effect, and we don't typically see that within the slice of the color pie. Yeah. I mean, we just saw drawing a card in red. I mean, okay, so red has been able to, to cantrip for years, but, like, yeah, I can Hunter. think of one... Mono black removal for an enchantment? Ah. Mm, there there might be out. more. Who knows? But there thinking of was one that's one playable. That got banned in standard. So. Here they first. They're going to ban it. this card. <laughs> not, not really. But yeah, the climate changed and the world suffered. Is that a reference to today? Don't read into I that. Mean, okay. <laughs> it has been exceptionally hot so far this summer early winter all right let's move on to pearl of wisdom look at how cute that otter is two and a blue for sorcery this spell costs one less to cast if you control an otter draw two cards i like that I like that a lot here for yeah. it two minute draw two there's an otter commander that i want to play with that goes in there it's amazing power of the pearl so does this mean that the pearls give otters power Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Make some wiser. No idea. Maybe. I mean, it does literally pearl of wisdom. But let's move on. Final card we're talking about from Bloomborough is Garrett Cake. <laughs> one of the white artifact food. When it enters and when you sacrifice it, you create a 1-1 one, one white rabbit creature token and you scry one. You can pay two, tap it, sacrifice Garrett Cake. You gain three life. It's like a food on steroids. Look at how excited those rabbits are in the background. Oh my god. That one on the bottom right is just bombed. It's <laughs> getting smashed. Let me have the carrot cake. I love it. Me too. For flavor. What do you think the secret ingredient is? For flavor. Get <laughs> secret ingredient? Hopefully it's not rabbits. Wow. Wow. Um, oh, that was a... We're jumping straight to cannibalism here. <laughs> that was dark. That was a Krabby Patty reference, sorry. Carrot cake. Just uh, old food you can sacrifice to make rabbits with now. Let's move on to Duskmorn. That's right. Coming out September 27th, less than two months after the set we just talked about in Bloomborough. First up, a brand new ley line. It's Ley Line of Hope. Two, two white for an enchantment. If it's in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. If you regain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. And as long as you have at least seven life more than your starting life total, creatures control get plus two, plus two. Pumped up anthem. Good card. Good. Pretty good. It's I mean, it cute. Could, it could be free. Pretty good. Pretty good. There is a card we will be talking about that specifically crushes life gain decks, which is interesting. Yeah. Um. um. I like how we went from, like, cute, fluffy animals into, here, let's go straight into horror. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where the Quite entire the... plane is a haunted house. Quite yeah. the difference. Mm. I don't know. There's a bunch of references in all these cards to certain movies. Yeah, I'm so excited for this, dude. Hilarious, and we will talk about them. Um, but this card seems good in standard, especially. You can just any kind of life gain deck. Mm-hmm. Moving on to Cursed Recording. Two and two red for an artifact. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a time counter on Cursed Recording. Then if there are seven or more time counters on it, remove those counters and it deals 20 damage to you. You can also tap it. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Reference to... Seven days. That's right. I love saw it. the recording. You have seven... Hey, strong, oh, strong ability, though, and you just have the potential to die. <laughs> uh, standard, st sorry. Yeah, standard. Yeah, I was going to say, in standard, in, in a game of, like, Commander, you might still actually just die on this. You, but yeah. Is there a way to redirect this? Hmm. Uh, you can give it to your opponent right before it gives uh, the last time counter, right? Uh, you could potentially give it to your opponent. You could, like, is does Gideon sacrifice redirect this to like a creature or something 
a, a single mana uh, for Gideon's sacrifice in white, and you're fine. Oh, perfect. Just deals all that damage to one of your creatures instead. <laughs> so, I feel like, like that's not great. Yeah, but that ability's strong, man. You you think that's not great? My brain immediately goes to I'm going to play this with Stuffy Doll, and yeah. that way my opponent can take twenty instead. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Too many hoops, but the ability seems strong. Just win the game before seven, right? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Let's move on to another card. It's called Chainsaw. New art as well. Kind of new style here. It's one and a red for an artifact equipment. When Chainsaw enters, it deals three damage to up to one target creature. And whenever one or more creatures die, put a rev counter on Chainsaw. Equipped creature gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of rev counters on Chainsaw. Equipped cost of three. Get it? Get vroom, it. Vroom, vroom. Yeah, every get time you it. rev the chainsaw, it gets more scary. I love the flavor. I love it. I think as a house rule, every time you put a counter on this, you actually need to make that noise. Yeah, and if, you, if you don't, then you don't get to put the counter on it. <laughs> yeah. And I put it to build, too. So, like, every new rev counter <laughs> is more vroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're dumb. <laughs> you, have to, you have to do the amount of rev counters every time. Yeah. Uh, I really like this. Texas Chainsaw. That's probably yep. what this is referencing. Pretty cool. Also, we've been seeing more and more equipment. I think they're trying to make equipment better as we've been seeing a lot of ETB effects for equipment lately. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, equipment is one of those things where I feel like it started really pushed and then they kind of like really pumped the brakes on it after equipment first got printed and then they slowly started to kind of creep back up into the world of like, how good can we make equipment? So we'll see. What do you I think like about this it. art style? I love it, David. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I don't like it, it at all. It's but. actually my favorite. I I love Synthwave. I love 80s. I love every like. I'm gonna collect them just to collect them. This definitely looks like something that Taco Bell would have given out in, like Shut kids up. meals. <laughs> it's like uh, go and go and buy some some Taco you know kids what? meals, dude. And We're gonna give you out <laughs> an exclusive pack. And if they did that in the 90s, I would collect it. I know you would have. <laughs> Moving on to come back wrong. Two and a black for sorcery. Destroy target creature. If a creature card is put into a graveyard this way, return it to the battlefield under your control. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Pretty cool effect, huh? Yeah. I do Move like it, this a lot. Get it and get rid of it. You get the ETB. Now, notably, this one does not give haste. So unlike most of these kind of like threaten effects, but I mean, this is pretty cool. You are also going to be able to just like destroy the creature. And if you're using like a, a sacrifice deck, you get more sacrifice fodder now. Mm -hmm. It's true. Or if it had a cool ETB. Yeah, I guess yeah. ETB or static ability, like anything. See, like that's why you always burn the bodies. <laughs> I mean, can we talk about the background? Like what is a, like a flare from Stranger Things? Like what's going on back there? Actually, I don't know, man. Crazy. It's scary. I mean, so my my thought with this is that like the little set symbol for this is like a, a butterfly it's mask, a great mask moth, type yeah. thing. All right, it's a moth. We're gonna go with a moth instead. A, a moth is just a less pretty butterfly. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> Moths can be pretty. Oh, I, mean, I didn't say scary. that they weren't pretty. I just said less pretty. Um, are we gonna get like Mothman in this set? I don't know, but they said that the moth is a very like important symbol throughout the set. So. Something's going on with this moth thing. Ooh, maybe there's clues. That's the artist kept mentioning that. Like, there's little details on a lot of these art pieces. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. like some kind of greater thing happening. Probably alludes to the story itself that we'll yeah. find out eventually. Exactly. Moving on. Next up, it's Toby, Beastie Befriender, two and a white for a one-one legendary creature, human wizard. As when the Toby Beastie Befriender enters. Create a 4-4 four, four white beast creature token with this creature can't attack or block alone. And as long as you control four or more creature tokens, creature tokens you control have flying. This right. art style is pretty cool because this is like in the mind of that character. Yeah. So. I feel like Hunter loves this card. Why? Because well, you're a token player and all your tokens will have flying now. Sure. What do you mean Sure. That's crazy. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's huh? a great flicker target. It's a little 1-1. One, one. Yeah, but creature tokens you control have flying. It's a pretty important line of text there. 
I have four oh my goodness. more. What is uh what, what what is the name of the it's like an old Mirrodin card. I know um, you're talking about that blue creature thing. There's a blue and there's a white, and they make yeah. the, the golems on ETB. This is like uh, exactly like that. It's a wonderful flicker card. target. What's up? I don't remember. This should be the podcast of us struggling to remember card names. Dude, What's this... that card again? <laughs> this is what happens that's, whenever we do things that's a lot. literally the name of it. What's that card again? Yeah. Yeah, I think Toby's uh Toby's pretty cool. He's a befriender. But he's interesting. He is interesting. Moving on to FOMO. That's right. It is the fear of missing out on a card. It's one and a red for a two three enchantment creature nightmare. It says when fear of missing out enters, discard a card, then draw a card. It also has delirium, which means whenever it attacks for the first time each turn, if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, untap target creature. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. What a FOMO. What a FOMO. Yeah, this uh, this is interesting. Why is... I mean, they announced that this set is going to focus heavily in the enchantment department. I don't understand why this is an enchantment creature. I uh, don't know either, but maybe we'll find out more, I guess. They also announced that the border going forward for any enchantment is going to have this little sparkly thing. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Not only creatures. On on one hand, that makes these a little bit more susceptible to removal because now like destroy target enchantment effects can take these out. Um, something else to talk about with this card though too is is this the cheapest style of like taking extra combat that we've seen? I don't it, I don't know of any that are this cheap. It's taking extra combat with one creature, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's untapped target creature, but if your creatures right. have vigilance or you have another way to be able to untap it, true. Sure, that's true. Yep. To answer your question, yeah, it might be the cheapest way because two mana is nuts. You do have to get Delirium, though. Which should not be difficult. I was going to say, historically speaking, that's not hard. Plus, this thing right here, at least on ETB, is going to put something in your graveyard. True. Good point. I don't know. I think it's cool. Um, Artwork, once again, what is going on there? It's eating the dreamers. I watched that video. <laughs> It is pretty scary. Moving on, we have a de-sparked wanderer. It is the Wandering Rescuer. It's three and two white for a three-four legendary creature, human samurai noble. It's got flash, it's got convoke, it's got double strike. It also says other tapped creatures you control have hexproof. There you go. More good keywords. <laughs> More room for good keywords. I feel like they took the black and white style from the Innistrad and Midnight Hunt, and it did poorly, and they made it better because this artwork is awesome. That is pretty cool. Well, for for that, they took a card that are they took a card that originally had color and just stripped it of its color. This I feel like is its own unique thing. Plus, there's like the red in there, and then it's got like things like I don't know what is this like a record kind of yeah. like a vinyl line going through there. Yeah. Really cool. I think it's I think it's really cool. Not a weird pop in foil. It's weird that the set symbol is not colored, but probably would look weird if it was like gold or whatever. Mm. It does make it look common. Yeah. This is definitely yeah. not what a common ability. As a card, what do we think about the Wanderer losing their spark? I mean, it's a bummer. This card's strong. Yeah. From story perspective, though, the Wanderer was a, a planeswalker that like didn't really have like control over their spark. So. I don't know. Is that a benefit? Like, now you're not jumping from place to place. Yeah, but now they're in a just, haunted house. Yeah, you're, you're just stuck <laughs> in a haunted house. <laughs> of all the, the places... That you can flash this in with Convoke, and then once they're Convoked, all those creatures hexproof. that Convoked it have Hexproof. Yeah. This is a I cool just, card. I don't, I don't like the idea of me attacking into a surprise 3-4 with Double Strike. Yeah. yeah exactly. Convoke's not broken. We've seen that. It's like the number one standard deck right now is Boros Convoke. Let's move on to Overlord of the Haunt Woods. Three and two green for a six five enchantment creature avatar horror. It has impending four for one and two green. What does that mean? It's a new keyword. 
It says, if you cast this spell for its impending cost, it enters with four time counters, and it isn't a creature until the last one is removed. At the beginning of your end step, remove a time counter from it. It also says, whenever Overlord of the Haunt Woods enters or attacks, create tapped colorless land token named everywhere. That is every basic land type. Look at that. It's, it's like homo. homo. <laughs> it is, but not quite. <laughs> Dude, impending is sick. You just have it be an enchantment for a couple turns and be less susceptible to removal. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, but if it is impending, it's also not a 6-5. True. Like, it, I don't know. It is neat. However, at the same time, there is a weird piece to this. You remove the counter at the beginning of your end step. Mm -hmm. It's true. So whenever this comes in, like, the first usage of its body is potentially going to be as just, like, a blocker. Yeah, that's true. So you have to wait a whole turn, turn cycle. That's kind of a bummer. It's interesting. At least it makes you a token on ETB though as well. So, I like it. I think uh, impending is going to be one of those mechanics that I feel probably going to be broken. But we'll see with the other cards whenever they start announcing Duskmorn. Because once I, like I said, this is coming out September. Yo, um, got does a this bit of time. does this one card just like make domain really strong? Yeah, of course. Because that's crazy. I Play mean, it for three, and then you have all the colors. So so does Omo. That's why I was like, Domain was one of the first things that I did when I was upgraded that deck. I typed yeah. in that keyword and I very quickly discovered there's not very many good Domain cards. Oh, you're right. <laughs> there's a couple of removal pieces or whatever, but yeah. Moving on to the card I alluded to in the beginning of the video. It is Screaming Nemesis. Two and a red for a creature spirit that's a 3-3 three, three with haste. It says, when it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any other target. If a player is dealt damage this way, they can't gain life for the rest of the game. Really good. Really good. Let me tell you, if I'm running a life gain deck in Commander, and that's my whole strategy, and someone plays this, I... Scoop? No, you better just kill it without dealing damage to it. Th that's ability, if I can't gain life for the rest of the game, is just... That's strong. That's really strong. This ruins my whole game plan. Well, I mean, on the bright side, if you were a life gain deck, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with haste, that's only 3 life per turn. Just make more life than that, and you're fine. Also, this is 100% going to go in my Nelly deck. I was going <laughs> to say, if, and if anybody does damage to it, it's probably going to the life gain player, no matter what. Well, it could be politics. You never know. Like, hey, won't do it this time to you, but next time I will. This there is, is no sick. next time, because... Most of the time, if there's a life gain deck, you're going after the one that gains the life. Hunter, don't cry, okay? We get it. You pay life I'm going to cry. Fine. You're a life gain deck player. We get it. It's fine. Yeah. I, I, I just think this is hilarious that this card, it's got both haste and defender on it. I mean, it actually doesn't have defender, but let's be real. I'm not attacking <laughs> with this. I'm going to sit there behind this and just be like, hey, you want to hit me? <laughs> it's almost like it has death touch as well. Oh, just like, don't want to touch it. you don't want to touch it yeah i don't like it <laughs> i like it it's I a spirit it. too hunter i hate it let's let's move on to this next card that i don't like that's right it's twitching doll one and a green for a two two artifact creature spider toy <laughs> you can tap it to add one mana of any color put a nest counter on twitching doll it also has another ability to tap it, sacrifice Twitching Doll, create a 2-2 green spider creature token with reach for each counter on Twitching Doll. Activate only as a sorcery. This is a, a really good mana rock. A doll made out of spiders is terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. But this is like a mana rock with upside, like a lot of upside. David, you didn't yeah. like it, but do you not like it because of the art or because the card's bad? I mean, it's incredibly offsetting. Okay. It's like, I, I don't like this artwork at all. It's Just like, imagine oh, it as, like, cool. coffee beans. <laughs> You're right. That's coffee right. Beans. It's made out of coffee beans. Coffee beans with legs that move. Mm -hmm. um, also, even, like, the bib on this thing. Is that a bib? The, the shirt. It's like, it's got, what is it, like a chicken? The chicken with a I duck don't head. Know. <laughs> it's got the head cut off. <laughs> like, the body's been cooked. What is this? Don't worry. It's a great manor rock that turns into spiders. I can't get over the artwork. I haven't even been able to process the words. I feel like I'm putting this in my deck for being a mana rock. Don't do that. I think you yeah. should. My brain will blank. 
one man of any color that then later can turn into a bunch of spiders. That's pretty sick, dude. It's pretty terrifying. Like, if someone plays this, this is eating removal immediately, right? No, Maybe. I'm not touching it. <laughs> not touching it. Oh my god, it's a creature. Yeah, you yeah. did. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> you know, I'm over here thinking, like, is this better than Arcade Signet? No, I didn't know it was like. Cool. I didn't creature. realize there was a creature, dude. Holy shit. They were moved immediately. This is also yeah. the buy box promo. Okay, Pretty sorry. Cool. It's a creature. <laughs> Let's move on to a, another creature, Shane. It's Doomsday Excruciator. It's six black mana. Six black pips. That's right. For a 6-6 six, six creature demon. It's got flying, and it says when it enters, if it was cast, each player exiles all but the bottom six cards of their library face down. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card. I love this. I love this. <laughs> I so absolutely stupid. love this. If you're playing mono black, this is stupid fun. Why? Because well, well, the game will end quickly. You're going to die first. I mean, hey. <laughs> you're drawing you two cards stuff. a turn with this card. Hopefully you got good stuff. That's all I'm saying. You know, I, I just want to... This is a six mana, six, six demon. It's got six fingers on each hand. Like, I love this card. It does really scary things. It's a funny <laughs> finger? Well, yeah. Okay. How many fingers do you have on your hand? <laughs> Four and a thumb. I don't think that... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I don't know. Play this in Thassa's Oracle, dude. You're great. You're great. You're fantastic. You're great. It only requires eight specific pips. <laughs> yeah. I want to play this in like just a specific mono black deck. Dude, this is going to be fun in Standard Hunter. Is it? You're going to love seeing this. Terrible. You're going to love seeing this card. <laughs> I, I think you play. Okay. Here's what I think it is. I think you play it right. And then you have to kill. You have to kill it because you can't live drawing two cards a turn with six cards left. Let me show you again. Thoughts is Oracle. Um, in standard. I, 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 oh, yeah, I guess. Hey, you never know. Okay, we're getting that new foundation set. We're going to get, we're, we're going to talk Spoilers. about that here in just a sec. But, um, before we move on from this card, though, I hate the fact that this says if this was cast. Because I look at this demon and I just think Beamtown Bullies would love so this card. I'm just so glad it has that line of text. Um, on the bright side, though, if you do reanimate this, you're not going to cast it, so at the beginning of your upkeep, just draw another card on a 6-6 six, six flyer. Whoa! That's very, that's very you good. cracked that code, too. Then we did it. Dude, Kali's going to love this. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, like the, I love this card. See, she didn't need to play. That way you didn't need to worry about the mana value. Also, what is going on with the artwork here? It's like jumping up from the ground or something at somebody because the sunglasses are pointed down. You can see an eyeball up at the top right-hand corner. Dave... It's a demon that come from hell. Yeah, but I don't... Okay, I, I like the card. I actually don't like this artwork. It's a little unsettling for me. I think I'm looking it's up amazing. Some of these nose. I think it's amazing. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Enduring Tenacity, 2-2 two, two black for a 4-3 enchantment creature, Snake Glimmer. It says, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And whenever this dies, if it was a creature, return it to the battlefield under its own control. It's an enchantment. I love this. It. You just can't get rid of it. I love this. It's tenacious. It's amazing. It's going to go in my it's enchantment deck. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> if you were to gain life, and if you were playing against screaming nemesis, you just don't get. You just don't gain it. Doesn't do anything anymore. Hunter's just like, what do I? What am I even doing? I don't like this, screaming nemesis. This is a dope card. Um, Glimmer is an interesting creature type. It is. It is. They're like good. The video, Glimmer. yeah, they said like they were helpful or like nice. Glimmer, you get like a, a glimpse of a glimmer of some nice thing. Glimmer, I guess I don't know. This is the only. This is the first card of entire Magic history that is a glimmer. Maybe it's just... like a happy little spirit that's gonna guide you on your way through your sure. heart. Yeah, hmm, that can't be true be... though, Hunter. They have uh, hmm. shapeshifters, dude. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Moving on to the final card we were talking about from Duskmorn. It's an uncommon called Nowhere to Run. One and a black for an enchantment. It's got flash. And it says when it enters, target creature and opponent controls gets minus three, minus three till end of turn. 
Now it says creatures your opponents control can be the targets of spells and abilities as though they didn't have hexproof. Ward abilities of those creatures don't trigger. Honor loves this. This is a very good card. This is a very good card. This is an enchantment, so it stays. Yeah. It needs mm -hmm. to say all of your ward is gone. Yeah. Ward doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it's uh it's pretty good because they just keep printing every creature with ward. Hey, I know you guys make the joke ward is flavor text. Now it really is. Yeah, this can flash this this gets flash this in, target something with ward to give it minus three, minus three, and it doesn't even matter. Pretty sick. Mm -hmm. I like this. Yeah. Good for uncommon too. And they did allude to this could have been an instant, but it's an enchantment because of the set. Yeah, they like enchantments. Yeah, so it's even better because it sticks around and continues to mess with their hexproof and ward. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Let's move on to a new set they announced today called the Magic the Gathering Foundations. That's right. What is it? It comes out November 15th. They basically said they'd made a set that is Magic the Gathering. What would we put in a set called Magic the Gathering? And they made this. It is a set that's coming to standard that is not rotating until 2029. At least. At least. Could be longer, they said. Welcome to the new core set. The new <laughs> world order. Oh, wait. I, I think that... this is insane. I got opinions, but let's go ahead and talk about some of these cards first. First one, Llanowar Elves is coming to this set. Yep. I, you know, on the bright side, this is only going to be in standard for the next a long time. Yeah, and it's not like they're printing anything that's like format warping or really powerful. I mean, like one mana mana dorks have never ever had a history of being really, really impactful. Hey, ma they're making green good again. It's fine. Hmm. For the foreseeable future. everything good again. I, I was going to say, I mean, standard, if I do recall, green was a menace last time Lattimore Elves was in standard. 10 like, years 15 ago. 15 years. Yeah, I was like, I don't even. No, 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 no. Well, oh my god, there was no way that was 10 years ago. Yeah. 10 years ago. Has it been in standards of 10 years? You feel old Wasn't yet? Wasn't it in, like, Dominaria? 10 years ago. 2024. Anyways, <laughs> Planet War Elves. <laughs> one green for I mean, one, a good one card. tap, add green. In case you didn't already know. Um, Seems fun. My problem, my problem with Foundations is that I'm in a part where like they've extended standard to now rotate every three years this stays five years maybe longer like shane said they better get on the band stuff quickly because not only are these very powerful reprints and kind of magic in a set they're putting new cards in this set too which why i'm not too worried about it honestly after watching them right, i know you have your reserves hunter but like I don't think it's going to be that bad. There's going to be other sets coming out in between that, too. Like, is it just supposed to be a literal foundation? Where it's like, these might, these are good, but who's to say that's, that's not going to be power crap? That's my problem with the there's foundation. Gonna be better, there's going to be better stuff. I'm going to be tired of playing the same decks for who, five years. Who knows you know going to be the best, though? You know what my favorite thing here is? Is that I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. Real quick, just to talk about foundations, Modern is my favorite constructed format. And this, I feel like it's just like it, it helps to bridge that gap a little bit because like modern is obviously it's it's non-rotating. And I'm going to use that with air quotes as we just are on the cusp of Modern Horizons 3, the uh, unofficial rotation. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, I don't know. There's a lot more options when it comes to cards. That means there's a lot more decks. That means that there's a lot more individual decks that dominate the format. <laughs> That's my problem. I don't think it's going to so, be that bad, Hunter. They are also adding Day of Judgment into this, another reprint. Two, two white for sorcery, destroy all creatures. That's right. We have a four mana wrath back in standard. Yeah. I think as, yeah, it's, it's super like they, they try to make it as basic as possible. Like pay mana, destroy all creatures. Super easy to understand what's happening there. Is it good? Yeah. Is it super broken? No. Well, let's move on to another reprint. It's Omniscience. Seven, three blue enchantments. You may cast spells from your hand without paying a mana cost. Like, this is not going to break standard, I don't think, dude. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that, like, wholeheartedly no troll. If there is a way for you to be able to cheat enchantments out, Omniscience can be a massive problem. Sure, I'll agree with that. There is ways to cheat out. 
Because, like, if, if you can drop an omniscience on, like, turn three, even four or five, like, your opponent is now going to get buried in card advantage. That's right. Yeah. We will see. I guess there's no card already, advantage. There's always ways to do that right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just think this is, it'll be an easy, like, I'm imagining it as, like, when you play an online version of a card game, you get the base cards, and you play with those for, like, a day, and you're like, all right, those were fun. Now I'm going to actually build a real deck. That's what I kind of see with this. We will see. Again, this set comes out November 15th. Less than two months again between <laughs> standard <laughs> sets. It's getting, it's getting ridiculous. Anyways, let's talk about new cards from Foundations. First up, Nine Lives Familiar. One and two black for a 1-1 one, one creature cat. This creature enters with eight revival counters on it if you cast it. When this creature dies, if it had a revival counter on it, Return it to the battlefield with one fewer revival counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. Super cute. Nine lives. Nine lives. It's very flavorful, but I feel like at the same time, this is kind of a pain in the butt to track. I mean, like, obviously, yeah, you just put a spin down on it, and then you just, like, spin that down as this thing dies. It's just, like, it's one more thing that, like, I don't know. It's changing <laughs> zones. Uh, <laughs> Seems pretty easy to track. It reminds, me, it. it reminds me of that one cat they used the cauldron on remember that yeah the cat that just yeah, keeps coming back this is like a fixed version they it kind of alluded to member berries ah <laughs> yeah member berries that card that was the you know the cat the oven that was totally not broken and that impressive was whenever yeah. it was in standard that was a fun um what happens whenever i just decide to like drop it down to one and then flicker it comes back with eight no it's just if you cast it Pew. Ah, okay. There we go. Because I was gonna say, I mean, this is, this is just getting it's getting weird. Poor kitty cat in the picture has already used the... eight. No, because the light that he currently has is the ninth one, right? Yeah. yeah. He's got eight oh, plus last the one. Life. Oh, we got it. I understand that. I mean, you typically don't have a tombstone mark. and scratches into it if That's it's true. like I got that much <laughs> life left to live. That's true. I was thinking of it the opposite way. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the final card we're talking about today, the final card from Foundation, brand new Anthem of Champions. Green and white for an enchantment. Creatures control get plus one, plus one. It's See, just super simple, and like, I think that's what they're trying to go for. Uh, I get it. It is super simple, and I, I get that from like a core set. I would argue that Nine Lives Familiar is probably not super simple. You're right. Um, two mana for uh, just a general anthem effect i okay. do feel like this card is fairly pushed i get that it's in two different colors but like still i think that this would probably still be fine at three mana or potentially even at four yeah i think it's a good card hunter's gonna run it card. i mean if that's what the most popular deck is probably oh you you're know, just a net deck all right sometimes you just gotta look at the meta and figure out what to play but i'll play whatever's whatever. best hey we'll see i like this card but that is gonna do it for us today Lots of cards, lots of sets. Still, all of this is coming out in 2024, and we're halfway done with the year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure that you also join us for tomorrow's video, where we talk about spoilers from 2027, whenever those cards come out. And they won't rotate for 30 more years. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. We're here. Standard. Um, but no. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, so you're staying up to date with all of the content we're always putting out. Before we wrap things up, guys talk to me what was your favorite card we talked about in these three sets we will start with you shane what do you think oh i got one for you buddy it's okay. a spirit you know i love me some spirits screaming nemesis <laughs> <laughs> i'm right. gonna say that just because of hunter's reaction i know i did that too i know yeah that actually that actually is a card that i probably will pick up and, and, and throw into a couple of decks too just for the, the fun shenanigans of it I am a huge fan of the six mana six six demon doomsday excruciator. I don't know how I'm gonna make you work or if I'm gonna make you work, but <laughs> I'm gonna play it and you're gonna kill me at some point. <laughs> Believe it or not, my favorite actually was an uncommon. I liked that last one we talked about, Dustmore. The nowhere to run, just the fact that guts off ward, really good. It's really good. But uh, yeah, comment down below. What was your guys' favorite card that we talked about today? Maybe just talk about what you think about all of these sets coming out. Are you overwhelmed? We kind of are. I love it. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> um, 
Also in the description, you'll find links to our social media accounts. That is right. That is Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. At Guys at Magic for each one. Follow us on those as well. On the screen right now, those are all of our Patreon subscribers. That's right. If you guys wanted to see what they see, which is not here on YouTube, check the link in the description for our Patreon account for all that extra goodie. And consider subscribing. And until the next video, hope you guys have great your day. Peace. Later. Bye-bye.